uh, representing black box stocks. We are a full service platform that's not just about dark flow activity. We're looking at money flow across the board, money flow. We're talking about those big market participants where that money um, that's being managed is being put to work. And one of the ways that we do that is not only by being able to check out the dark pool activity that's coming in, but also eagle eyeing the options flow. Um, so I have a few of my best, my personal mentor, Options Mafia, who has been trading for over 22 years. Um, he is a master at the flow. I've been so fortunate to be able to work alongside him, as well as everybody else on the panel every day. But he really has pushed me to learn flow, to really get into it. Um, oftentimes, people are looking for what they want to find, and we're looking for something a little more specific. So we've also got Seven Star uh, on the mic, who is an instructor, because we do want to make sure you're able to actually learn how to use the options flow. That's something that we include on our platform. DMAX on with us, going to be talking a little bit about the community and some of the other features that we have. And then we also have Bender, who has been trading, gosh, I don't Bender, you've been with this team for a long time, but he's one of our advanced traders. He's really tuned in with the technicals. He's going to talk about how he goes through and uses the flow alongside and matched up with his technical analysis. So again, I am Mel Stone. I am more specialized in the dark pool area of the platform. So before we get any further, let me just talk a little bit more about what a dark pool is. It definitely sounds a lot more ominous than it is. A lot of misinformation out there, but in essence, a dark pool is a private exchange. And that's gonna be a little bit different from what you and I trade on, which is known as the lit market. And it's lit because we have access to the open order book. Most of you guys know this as level two. You're able to see where there's bids set up or sizing set up um, on the chain, your bid ask uh, on level two. But unfortunately, that's not something that we can see when we review the dark pool activity because that is the purpose of trading on a dark pool. They're concealing their intent. So we pretty much just have nothing. However, that volume has to be recorded. So we get to see that activity as that's being recorded to your consolidated uh, tape, your time and sales. So it's important to think about. Uh, they're still regulated. They still have to follow SEC guidelines. Um, but the volume is recorded to the time and sales. So that's kind of like an accounting record when you think of an entity or an underlining. Every part of any volume must still be represented and be portrayed on the consolidated tape. So that's what we get to see that activity. Now we don't know the intent and whether that's a buy or a sell. So we're using this information to be able to better assess, hey, look at me, take a look at me. And what we're looking for is some of that unusual activity that comes in. Um, we're looking for size, but more importantly, we're assessing that and how that's coming through technically on our chart. Um, so we're looking for areas that may be coming into support um, or areas that may be coming in as resistance. But I found one of the best features of black box stocks is the proprietary dark pool volume profile, which is actually overlaying this activity directly on your chart, your black box stock chart, so that you're able to see how price interacts at those levels. So not only are we able to see what's coming through that day, but we're also able to see historical activity. And this money flow alongside the activity that we get to see in the options market is really giving us a firsthand look and full advantage to the money flow that's being traded by our larger market participants, hedge funds, institutions, we're as close as we could possibly get into where they're looking to put money flow to work. Perfect. I think that was a fantastic initial overview of, you know, what is, I, I feel the dark one, I know we'll go into some others as well. Um, and, you know, the value to being able to overlay it on the charts is amazing as well. Um, now, Mel, do you think it would be best to kind of go around and have each speaker give a little bit to them as to, you know, what they use money flow with on a daily basis, how they utilize it, how they implement it? Yeah, that'd be great. Charlie, did you want to start us off and give us a little overview? You've had so many years of trading experience. Uh, we'll start with, we'll start with um, your wisdom. Oh, so you picked the nervous guy first. That's all right. That's okay. Um, really, we, we, you know, and Mike will probably touch on this better than I will. We look for STU, which is size, time, and urgency. I'm not looking for $30,000 of XYZ to come through expiring Friday. I could care less about that. Basically, I'm looking for millions of dollars with time on the contracts. Um, I'm not sure what was the, um, Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I think that's a, yeah, that's a good start as to like what you're looking for. I hear the size wise. Then you also mentioned, you know, urgency. Um, So I guess give me on a, on a standard day, right? You're running the scanner or you're just eyeing stuff as it comes in. What stands out to you and goes, you know, I'm going to go and use that in my trading today. So really you you get a lot of flow and 99.7% of options flow is crap. So it's really three out of a thousand lines that are, uh, probably actionable. Um, you're looking for those that stand out. And the, and the biggest thing about options flow is is having it is one thing. It's a very dangerous tool. Uh, understanding it is something completely different. And that's where I think we try to go above and beyond is to teach members how to use it and how to use it correctly. Sometimes you'll end up with a big bid side or even a below the bid uh, print. And we know it's a buy. Last week, uh, I think it was Docu and TTWO and a f- couple more had bid sides at the end. We knew just by the IV timestamps, this was just additional buying. Um, so we're really looking for that four leaf clover. You know, it, again, you may look out there in your yard for an hour before you find anything that's a four leaf clover. And sometimes you might sit there all day and not find it. And that's okay. You, you don't, you just don't trade flow that day. But yeah, we're looking for just big money orders with time personally. Got it. Okay. So big money orders with time. Um, with Okay. So within that, are you looking for, let's say several orders come in kind of, you know, it's 9.40 a.m., right? This morning you had this happen with Tesla where several orders came in, um, most of them with bullish call option. But what if it's mixed, right? What if there's a bunch of bullish, a bunch of bearish? What are you kind of like seeking for as you're putting together the pieces um, of something that's going to actually be actionable? So... If it's really mixed, I, I generally don't play it. But with, with Tesla, for a good example, you could be bullish for this week and bearish for three months. And that's something I tell people all the time is both sides can be right because we get this question a lot. It's like, well, man, I, you know, they're they're buying for October, but they're they're selling puts for decent or for January. I'm like, OK, who cares? This isn't January. This is still October. So, you know, party on. Right. Uh, both sides could easily be right. So if it's but if it's mixed for this week, I'm not going to touch it. If it's mixed and I'm looking at next week's and it's mixed, I'm not going to touch it. So I'm looking for something that's very crystal clear. I mean, you want this water to be, you know, uh, off Fiji or something, just crystal clear. You can see just everything you want to see. It's not muddy. It's not murky. It's not anything. Can you define that? What what makes something crystal clear to you? Uh, just ask, ask above, ask that timestamp. So. If it's one large order, that's pretty crystal clear, right? So you might have like ATVI last Monday was crystal clear. It was, what, $2.2 million above the ask. Just it, one order. That was it. It doesn't get any clearer than that. And sometimes you might see it where it's 300000 ask, you know, then another 200000 above the ask. Then you might see 150000 bid side. And you might see another 100000 bid side and then another 500000 above the ask. But it's all coming in and and. 1.2 seconds, right? So me and you both didn't decide to buy and sell in that 1.2 seconds large lots. We know that's the same buyer. So in that situation, again, that would be crystal clear. Just boom, 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 rapid fire. We call it where they just keep pounding the same strike and expiration. Uh, that's pretty clear. So big orders, just solo big orders or just rapid succession. Awesome. Mel, any other questions you want to throw um, this way for now or should we uh, keep the ball rolling? Nope, let's keep the ball rolling. I think um, DMAC with Blackbox actually had the example that came in this morning on Tesla where we saw a bit of that activity. DMAC, do you want to speak more about that one? Yeah, so Tesla was definitely, it was all about Tesla today for the most part. I mean, with what they're doing with Hertz, they had this really large order. They got the GOAT, Tom Brady, coming out in a commercial where he looks like Iron Man plugging it into his chest. I mean, uh, there was flow for days on Tesla, and we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triple-digit gainers on our options alerts from this flow today on Tesla. And we had a lot of members do really, really well on this. Uh, several of these contracts from the thousands, the ten fifties, eleven hundreds, twelve seventy fives, and so on. Uh, so it was a really exciting day. Um,
Talking about Flo, I mean, me personally, like uh, we had uh, Flo play come out on Friday and snap, and it was it was one that was, you know, more on the riskier side, and that was one that I was in, and then we saw some Flo come in earlier today, and pretty sure that that same buyer rolled into some contracts that uh, were a little bit closer to the money um, from where snap was trading today, so... We saw that repositioning come in, which is really interesting about flow is, you know, you can see when people, uh, when, when money's doing that. So, um, you know, reading the flow and paying attention to it, like, like Charlie had said, uh, it definitely tells you a, a really good story if you know how to read it. So walk me through, you know, on a daily basis, um, how you use the platform. And, you know, this can be applicable right to you know, numerous platforms, but specifically with your situation, um, you're coming in in the morning, you're finding alerts, you're looking at level two data. Uh, what is, you know, what, it, what does it mean to you to track the money flow? Are you taking notes as you're going through it? Um, for somebody who, you know, is entering into this space and they're brand new to it and they just, you know, they're trying to gain an edge. What are the most useful things for them to know and to implement? I'd say the most useful things are, you know, the, the starting out with the education is, is knowing, you know, we, we do like Tim, uh, Charlie said, we do a really good job at um, teaching things about the flow. And, you know, Mike, he does a really good class for understanding options flow. Um, starting there and then, you know, listening to what's going on in the community. Like Mel said, we have a really great community with our moderators and they're in there all day, every day talking about what they're seeing, discussing ideas, you know, why they're looking at something. So for somebody, anybody who's new to the platform, it's really great for them to be, you know, on the live trade room and listening in and, you know, paying attention to what's going on with the people that are experienced at looking at these tools and what they're talking about when they're seeing what they're seeing. And then, you know, taking the classes and then you start to develop becoming a better trader, becoming a flow trader as you're able to you know, read this language. And it is somewhat challenging at first, but the way that we lay it out and the way that we teach it and the repetition that you see and then the different circumstances that's all going on in real time, it's like learning on the job training. Uh, you can't find anything better than that when it ter in terms of like following, you know, what institutional money is doing and seeing how it moves markets, how it's actionable. Definitely. Can, can yeah, go ahead. Can, can I ask you back one thing? Uh, you said Tom Brady looked like Iron Man, and I thought Tom Brady was Iron Man. So it's just, he, it's my man pretty much crush. Is. Yeah, it's my I man mean, crush. I just. <laughs> Maybe get that cleared up. Yeah. I mean, Charlie, he, uh, I saw him pull the plug out of his chest. And it was the first thing I thought. And I was like, oh, well, that makes sense right there. So they're really, uh, they're going big. Uh, I guess they're coming back onto the NASDAQ. Hertz is uh, making a good move here. And, you know, I mean, Elon, I'm sure he's smiling about this as well. So a quick follow-up question, and then I will um, go to a couple of other speakers is, can you um can you give me a, maybe a real life example of this happening recently? Um, maybe not today or you know, but in the past like week where you know you came in, uh, you did a search. Did you use a filter for that search? Did you? How did it, something come onto your radar? And then how did you implement it? Did you pick a certain strike? Did you pick a certain date? How did you know what to pick? Kind of walking me through that process. We generally don't tr change what they do, so. Uh, one of the filters I run is 200,000 opening and above. And if they buy the ATVI, I wouldn't change it. Whatever the, whatever the smart money does, we tend to do too. The only time we'll change it, if it's a little too far out of the money for our liking, we may go at the money, but we will not change, you know, a shorter expiration or further out of the money. So it's pretty much trying to like pinpoint, you know, who the people, you know, what the, corporations are trading okay that makes sense um and also you know i i didn't mention this just yet but uh as we're speaking i highly recommend taking a look at these speakers profiles as they're going you can always go in and find some really cool information scroll through some of their posts uh you know if this is a topic that you want to learn more about these are some of the best people in the industry to follow for that so 
Um, I just highly recommend doing that during this time. And then, um, David, was there anything else you wanted to add on to uh, what Charlie said? Uh, no, uh, just that I really agree with him. And I think that all of these guys do a really incredible job at reading flow, dark pool, the activity, and, you know, sharing uh, what they're looking at and the ideas and, you know, providing a lot of clarity to you know, people that are, are new on the system. Like I said, in the live trading room, um, they just did a really remarkable job at it. So shout out to all of these guys that are on with us. Yeah, 100 percent. Cool. Uh, Mel, I'll turn it back to you to uh, go to who you would like next. Let's get um, Seven Star Mike because he actually teaches the Understanding Options Flow class every Thursday night. That's included as part of your membership. And he does a great job at breaking down not only how to read each line item, but how to contextually put that together to find actionable trade ideas using the Options Flow. So go ahead, Seven Star, take it away. All right. So this will also speak to the last question as far as what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a portion of the Black Box platform where we're watching the options flow come in live. And it is line by line. And the way I use it is basically, and I'm a full-time trader, so I have the luxury of staring at this screen six and a half hours a day, five days a week for the last five years. So what I'm doing is actually just watching all this flow come in order by order. And what we're looking for, it was mentioned before, we're looking for size, time, and urgency. And what we're essentially doing is watching these big money traders trade live. So what we see on the scanner, it's all real-time information. So if something fills on the exchange, it's going to show up on the scanner simultaneously. So as these orders fill, if we see something coming through the scanner for, let's say, a $3 million trade, that trade just literally executed on the exchange. So essentially what we're doing is we're watching for these big money traders to really come in and open an aggressive position. And so we're watching this line by line and we'll start to see certain patterns of the way the flow comes in. You might see something that catches our attention, but it's not quite big enough to follow, but it's in the back of our mind. Just random, let's just say XYZ. I'm not going to pick a specific ticker. XYZ comes in at $200,000. Maybe it's ask side and we know it's an opening order. Now, that might not be something that I'm going to trade off of, but I know in the back of my mind, okay, they just hit XYZ for $200,000. And then maybe a minute goes by and we see it again. And then three minutes go by and we see it again. That's the type of stuff I'm looking for is a certain pattern in the way the big money comes into their position. And we want to see size. You know, if you're talking about people with hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal and they put on a trade for $60,000, how like how big of a trade is that really to them? It's just not something we're going to pay attention to. But if they come in and drop $3 million on an options trade, that's going to capture our attention as long as it's $3 million in the right way. So as Charlie said before, it's not just watching the scanner and just jumping into everything. Most of the scanner we're going to ignore. So there's good flow and bad flow. And what I'm looking for on a daily basis is just the right pattern for the way the big money enters these positions. We want to see that size. We prefer time just because if we have a red day in the market, it's not going to hurt us if we're in a six month contract versus a weekly and then urgency. So if they're aggressively trying to open a position, we've got to ask ourselves why. And the bottom line is we don't know why we see what they're doing, but we don't know why they're doing it. So we just have to look for the right pattern of the way they're opening these positions that historically has shown us it just works out. Now, these big fund traders, they don't make a living by losing money. It happens. No one has a perfect system. And we've taken trades from the system and lost money, of course. And every system you use is going to have that. But we've actually dialed in the formula that we're looking for pretty well so that the vast majority of the trades, um, we're batting between 85 and 90 percent plus of what we take, generating a nice profit for us. So once we stick to that formula of the way these guys are entering their trades, it's just a very specific criteria that we're looking for. And then it's just discipline to stick to it. You have to be patient as a flow trader. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm just watching this flow come in live. When I see the right pattern, I'm taking the exact same trade the big money took. Now, again, we don't know why they're doing what they're doing. So if they want four months of time for ticker XYZ and they want a $100 strike, 
I don't know why they're choosing that time and that strike. So I'm just going to follow the exact same time and strike that they're doing. And we found that just when we follow the right trades, they're just high probability trades. Because again, if you're exposing your client's money into an options position that expires, it has to make the move and it has to make the move in a certain time frame. Unlike common shares where you can hold on to it forever if you need to, these options contracts expire. So it has to make a move in a certain time frame. And we just found that when we find the right pattern of the big money aggressively opening a position, we don't have to know why they're doing it. We're just going to follow it. And typically, our success rate of when we find the right flow to follow, it's just it, they're very high probability trades. So I'm just watching live data flow for that pattern. And when I see that pattern come through, I pounce on it. I actually don't look at charts before I enter a trade. And if you look through my social media feeds, you'll see that I'm actually pretty big on technical analysis. But for the right flow trades, I don't even look at a chart. And the reason for that is if someone drops $3 million on an options contract right now, and I know that it's real live data, whatever the chart looks like or whatever the Greeks or whatever the news, all this combined, if it was that bad of a position, they wouldn't expose $3 million of their client's money into that position. So the fact that they're willing to open their position right here, right now, means I'm willing to just tag along with them. And as options flow traders, that's really all we're doing. We're just tagging along with the big money traders who are smarter than us. Maybe they have access to information that we don't have. Maybe they just know stuff. They have these huge research teams. Whatever the reason is that they're aggressively opening a position, we're not going to know the reason, but we see what they do with that information that they have. And then we just follow them into it. And like I said, we've seen the pattern that they open these positions that just has a high probability of working out. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to see that you can be super profitable just by, you know, following it. But um, I, I might, you know, before Blind Trust, I might do some TA, but it sounds like you have those skills as well. Um, Mike, I'm, I'm, I think your sound quality might have been a little bit muffled for me. I'm not sure if there's a, a, a Wi-Fi or something. I mean, I heard everything, so no worries. Um, but I'm just not sure if there was a sound quality thing there. I do have some follow-up questions. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned, right, that you're taking the patterns, just following the patterns. Can you break down a little bit more uh, intrinsically, what do these patterns look like? How do you recognize them? And, you know, when are they at the point where you're comfortable enough to just, you know, go ahead and just place that same trade? Um, and maybe if you could give, you know, a few examples and we can kind of follow along. Sure. So... Essentially, and we're going to say this over and over again, we're looking for size, time, and urgency. So again, the person who's trading six contracts of Apple, maybe those contracts double or triple, but that's just not the person we're trying to follow into a trade. We want to follow someone who has the ability to move the market or someone that just might have, a, like I said, that research team to open a position where we don't have access to that research or they just have information that we're not going to be able to have ourselves those are the types of people we're trying to follow. So we want to see these big size trades. Now there isn't a specific dollar amount. When I teach the class, people are always asking, okay, so are you looking for a million dollars? Are you looking for $3 million? There isn't a specific dollar amount because that's just one piece of the puzzle. So we're looking for a combination of things. We want to see opening positions. So we're looking for ask and above ask orders. We want to see sweeps over blocks. Usually what we'll see, and not usually, but oftentimes we'll see a bunch of sweep orders and then a big block order at the end of it, and that's fine. But we don't want to follow just a single block trade, regardless of the size, because that's the urgency factor. So sweeps are really showing the urgency over blocks. So I want to see ask side. I want to see sweeps. I want to make sure they're opening orders, and I want to see that there's a, a good amount of volume behind it. And by that, I mean the dollar amount. So again, we're not looking for someone to spend $200,000 on an options contract where to you and me, that might be a big trade, but we've got to think of these big money traders with hundreds of millions of dollars. So $200,000 isn't going to capture my attention. We want to see 800,000, 1.2 million, 3 million. So I'm looking for those above ask sweep opening orders with a good dollar amount behind them. And when you watch the scanner, it's just, it's, probably difficult at first because there's so much information coming out at you and each line of flow has a bit of data that you need to kind of look at and dissect. But after a month or two of staring at the flow, it actually, it's, it's just second nature to us where we can see the flow and just 
there isn't really a thought process. It's just we see it and it's just not something we're going to take action on. Or we're going to see something and then by the time it builds and builds and builds, boom, that's where we enter. It's just an automatic response. So the point of entry, sometimes we're going to see a build where we might see a few of those $200,000 orders. And then we're kind of keeping a mental check. Okay, they've hit that name three times. Ooh, they came into it again. Oh, now they're really going after it. And there's a point where, and this is just part of seat time. You know, you can't teach experience. We can teach you the individual levels of what we're looking for. And then that seat time comes in where there's a point where we're gonna go and just go, okay, that's the point where I gotta get in. And whenever that point triggers, we're just gonna go right into the trade with the big, big money. Um, Got it. An example. Are... Go ahead. Uh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I'll. Keep... I have more questions for after. Yeah. So some recent examples. We saw AXP. They were coming into that one. Um, this was the 1029 180s, and this was coming back a while. Uh, the beginning of the month, but like the first week of the month, and they were buying this contract at about three dollars. This contract went down to a dollar something, I believe. Uh, I don't have the notes in front of me, but it went from three to maybe a dollar sixty or a dollar forty or something. And we're watching the flow to see if the big money that entered the trade is exiting the trade, and we don't see an exit from them, which to me means they still believe in the trade or it hasn't reached their risk tolerance yet. And so this particular trade, we got in around three, it drops about sixty percent, but the big money is not exiting their position. So that's a clue to me to stay in the position also. And then these contracts went on, I think they went to like 200 or 300 percent gain. Um, we had SEAS, the world a while back did the same thing. So we watched the big money get in. Even if the contracts drop afterwards, we're watching the flow to see what the big money thinks about the trade, meaning are they staying in the trade or are they exiting? And as long as we don't see an exit, we're, we're basically saying they still believe in the trade. And we've seen a few of these drop 30%, 40%, and some people are getting shaken out. And then three weeks later, maybe a headline comes out or it just goes on a run. And something that might've been cut for a 30 or 40% loss goes on to make 100 or 200% gain. So what we're really doing is we're just watching how the big money trades these tickers and watching the positions they open, watching to see whether or not they're closing and we're just basically taking our guidelines from what they do. So we've got a bunch of examples of trades that turn against us a little bit, but the big money believes in the trade, so we stay in it with them. And then it goes on and turns around and makes a profit for us. So as amazing as flow is, you still do need proper trade management as well. You can't position size such that, oh, this is a big high probability trade. I'm going to throw my whole account into it. And then that's the one that drops and you get shaken out because it drops a little bit and then it goes on two weeks. to make profits when you might look at it and say oh my god this is a bad trade it's not working out the big money believes in the trade they stay in it we stay in it with them and the results come out later on so i i just chalk it up to these guys know what they're doing they know how to trade this is what they do for a living um as a retail trader this is what i do for a living but on a much smaller level so i'm just going to take the cue from what these guys do with their hundreds of millions of dollars how they position how they manage it and it's just basically tagging along. So on that, um, Mel, I see you just posted the EXPE one. And yeah. what you're showing there, I think, is that the money came in on the 19th, I believe. And since the 19th, EXPE has uh, dropped significantly, or not significantly, I guess, but 3%. And so maybe... Even Those options have gone down, but more money came in um, on the 22nd, kind of at the lows. So that would be an indicator to, you know, they're, they're kind of doubling down. Gab, you're a natural. You've got this. <laughs> I'm going to speak for a minute and hopefully uh, Charlie will jump in here. But 
so on 10, it was actually 10, 20, um, the 11, 19, Gab, you're a natural. You've got this. <laughs> I'm going to speak for a minute and hopefully uh, Charlie will jump in here. But so on 10, it was actually 10, 20, um, the 11, 19, 165 calls came in. Um, they came in with some, you know, this is not a name that sees that much activity every day. Um, and one thing that we were watching was as they continued to sweep in with a few hundred thousand, they continued to pay up. So let's kind of just take a step back and talk about um, a block versus a sweep. And a block is an order that's filled on one exchange. It's pre-negotiated versus a sweep order that's going to come in and they say, get me in and get me in now. They'll go across several exchanges to get that fill. It shows more aggression. We had nothing but back-to-back -back sweep orders coming in. And you can see the size that's coming in. I've got the value highlighted on the right. But more importantly, what I want to draw your attention to is how they continue to pay up for that contract. So they first came in paying $6.24. They went all the way up paying $7.72 on that same day with over, let's see here, we had over $6.42 in premium. That's from intent to trade. That's the size that we're talking about. It's fulfilling the size. Um, we've got a little bit of time on the contracts. They weren't going with a weekly. They were going out to 1119, so the next monthly. Um, and urgency, sweeper activity, and they continued to pay up. So they started at 624 and still wanted in with millions of dollars, uh, even paying as high as 772 a contract. This was something that we had a few people getting a little weary about same day, but they never exited that position. And you're right, Gav, nailed it. Perfect, perfect. Uh, they did come back in on 1022 and added to that same strike and expiration above the ask another 600,000, that time paying 599, and they are still in. So that's a little bit more of a recent contract, Charlie. If you have anything to add to that one, you know, definitely jump on. But um, just one I know that we've all been watching that that technical setup is is looking looking pretty good. Um, pulled down to a support area. Uh, we've got a doji on the daily. I think we even saw some put writing coming in. So I like seeing that come into those as this one's just kind of trying to base here. I think we see a little more upside coming into EXPE. Right. I, I see it right on the 200 day as well. And it looks like the wick went down to the 100 and then popped back, but definitely some support there. Um, with that being said, a couple of questions and either Mel or uh, Charlie can answer this uh, or, or Mike. Um, so here you're saying the money's still in, but how do you know that the money's still in? How would you see if somebody covered, if somebody took the money out, what would that look like? So this one, I actually They're going to come through on that. Here's, uh, there's two ways you can do this. So a lot of people look at the OI the next day and the OI is going to show us the number of open contracts. So let's say there's 10,000 open today and 5,000 open tomorrow, you know, they closed out 5,000. The problem with that is you're delayed. It's a day late because OI doesn't open until the next morning or doesn't change. And sometime before the market opens, right? With the flow and black box, black box will actually show you bid side and closing transaction. And this is one of these things that these guys have done an amazing job setting this up. We can see in the flow live that they're actually closing out of this position. So instead of having to wait to watch the OI the next day, which if you're in the trade and it gaps down, you can't get out when the big money got out because you don't know they got out until the next day when the market opens. So watching the flow live, we'll actually see the exit and we'll see them exiting live as they're doing it. Now it's not as clear as you get a blinking light on the screen that says the position you're in is closed. But if you're watching the flow, we show you how to watch the flow in such a way that these are opening positions, these are closing. And if I'm in a position, it's in the back of my mind what position I'm in. And I'm watching the flow on that ticker as it comes in. And if I see the right flow for an exit, I know that there's a point where the big money is actually closing out of their position. So Blackbox does an amazing job of actually showing us as live as it is to get into a position, they'll show us just the same way on the exit. We'll see the exit coming through the scanner live as they're actually doing it. So it's one of those things where you just know what positions you're in and you're watching those tickers as they come through. And when you see the right bid side flow in the right quantity in the right manner, you can say, okay, look, here it is. They're kind of closing out this position 
and we can see if they're doing it in small doses or if they're seeing it in one big shot. But we'll actually see that live as they're actually closing the position through the scanner. So what, what does that look like on the scanner? So right now I'm, I'm just on the platform, um, I believe, on the scanner. And, you know, uh, let's say I put in AMD. So if you're maybe following along with me, um, I see a lot of calls. I see puts, right? That's the indication that I see. I see purple, white, yellow. I don't understand those fully just yet. I have to learn more. Um, how would you, like, what in here, if you could show me, like, would indicate that something has been um, perhaps, you know, re uh, or sold or they've sold off calls or they've covered? Do you see any of that in here? Um, I'm going to take this this one. So uh, we've recently gotten Gav set up on the system. Um, Gav, with the filters um, for by default are gonna be set up ask and above the ask. And the reason for that is because options flow comes at you hard and fast. We have so much data on this platform that we don't want to overwhelm somebody that's initially coming in. Uh, I'll be able to walk you through how to set your filters up to be able to see more information or you're able to hone that down to see exactly what you'd like. And for example, um, I like to keep all the information open so that I could assess all of the activity. Uh, I can take in all that data. I'm comfortable with that. Charlie is an OG. He's been in this game for a long time. He doesn't want to see all that. He likes to keep it ask above ask. It doesn't like to see puts. So there's ways that we can um, show you how to maneuver the filters to fit something that's going to fit your trading style. But uh, without doing a walk through, I don't want to confuse you with um, some extra at this time, but you're able to filter that to something that you would personally like to see come in because everybody's going to be a little bit different with the kind of data they'd like to have coming in. Okay, so let's talk about those filters real quick. So you know, I think, Mike, you mentioned that you're looking for really high premium, you know, $800,000. So are you just filtering that out? You don't want to see anything that's maybe less than half a million? So we get this question a lot in the class. And for me, I want to see everything that comes through the scanner minus a few things. So I don't watch puts either. I'm looking for call positions only because puts are often used as a hedge. So we don't know if a large put position comes through, if that's a trade someone's taking or just a hedge against their common shares that they might have. So I don't watch puts. I don't watch multi-leg. So I don't trade complex strategies. So I'm literally just watching for a call position that's been open. Now, I have been watching flow for five years, so I'm comfortable with everything that comes through the scanner. So like Mel said, I want to see the full picture. I do watch ask and bid side because the bid side is what's going to show me whether these are closing positions. Um, I'm watching basically calls for ask and bid side and sweeps and blocks. I don't filter out dollar amounts because I want to see, like I said, the full picture. So sometimes what we'll see is $99,000 of trades coming in and they go boom, 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 boom. If you have the $100,000 filter, you won't see any of those. But if you see $99,000 hit at a single time, maybe 15 or 20 times in a row, that's going to grab your attention. So by filtering out and you don't, you said you don't understand the colors yet. So white, well, I'm not going to get into it too much, but the white flow isn't quite as significant as the yellow and purple, but a lot of people ask, well, then let's filter it out. I don't like to do that because it's part of the picture, All right? So I don't want to see one thing and make a decision on it. I want to see everything they've done with the ticker. So watching the ask side and the bid side, watching the all three colors on that, watching all the dollar amounts, instead of saying, I just want to see 500,000 and greater, I want to see everything they're doing with the ticker because that's going to build up the story. And if they're hitting it for small amounts and then a big amount, I'm going to see that. If I just have the filter for the big amount, there's parts of the puzzle that I'm going to be missing. So for me, I'm comfortable watching enough of it. And I know how to slow it down enough to find specifically what I'm looking for. So I don't like the dollar filters because I want to see, like I said, the big picture. How are they building into this position? And if they're starting with smaller dollar amounts and then going bigger, I'm going to see that where if you use the big money filter, you're going to miss all those little pieces leading up into the big trade. So I try not to filter too much out of the flow, except for, like I said, I don't watch puts because I'm not going to trade puts from the flow. We do trade puts on red days, just not from the flow, because again, for me, a lot of those can be a hedge. 
So I slow the flow down by not watching put. And then again, it's just, I don't want those dollar amounts because it's gonna take a piece of the picture away from what I'm trying to look for. Got it, got it, awesome. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I think it sounds like with the experience that you have, um, that's definitely the best setting for yourself. But you know, of course there are those filter options for others. Um, okay, couple, so first off, Mel, if there's, you know, any um, other examples, I feel like the ones that you put up top are really helpful. If there's other screenshots, you know, as we're talking, um, I'd love to have you pin those up top. I will definitely get you some of those. I'm actually going to kind of walk you through a setup I just found in After Hours. I think that's got um, some really good potential. I do want to give Bender a chance to jump yeah. on the mic. Yeah. Bender um, is just amazing at technical. He's been with his team for a long time, but he also uses this information to trade advanced strategies. So while we are definitely focused on a lot of um, the activity we're seeing to trade directionally, Bender kind of puts his own spin on stuff and adds his own little flavor. So if you are someone who does trade um, advanced strategies, Bender definitely uh, takes a different look at the flow to be able to intermix that to be able to take it to a different level. So Bender, go ahead and um, give us a little more insight. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mel. Um, yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, I started with with what's on the chart is gospel, right? That's, that's the most important for me. Um, I, you know, I, if the flow is really good, uh, like really good as in Charlie's like, yeah, this is, uh, options mafia. You guys know this op options mafia. If he's like, yeah, this is the flow. This is, we got to follow this, right? I, I might take it. Uh, I'm probably going to take it, but it all starts with the chart for me. And, you know, when you're when you're charting things, um, you know, it often feels like, you know, I, I want to know that they all see what I see, right? This is what I see on the chart. I've drawn out trend lines. I've got my fibs on there. I've got support and resistance levels drawn. I've been watching something for a while. Um, you know, seeing what big money is doing, it gives you that kind of extra piece of information that, yeah, they see what I see. And... I love those trades, right? If I've been stocking something and then, and a lot of times I, I, I have a starter position before the flow comes in, but if I'm stocking something and all of a sudden we start seeing, oh, there's some puts hitting the bid on this name, right? Oh, there's FedEx is a great example. We saw um, a, a big dark pool transaction hit on FedEx um, last week. And then about a day later, two days later, we started seeing puts hitting the bid. And then we started seeing calls come in and it's like, that's, that's everything that I'm looking for right there. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of take the experience that I have in charting and, and technical analysis. I take what I can from options mafia. He's, uh, he's the best there is as far as flow is concerned. Um, and then I take Mel's information on dark pool and I use all these things together uh, to, to come up with, you know, my own strategy, my own trade plan. And, and, you know, Mike doesn't, Mike, you, you, you rarely do you hold stuff more than 10 minutes, <laughs> but you know, I'm a very short term trader. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Realistically, not for more than a day or two, maybe. Um, and, and, and that works, that works for a lot of people. Um, you know, me personally, if, if I'm trading based off my own chart and I'm looking for that confirmation from big money that they see what I see, um, unless they really start dumping out of those contracts, uh, I'm going to stay in as long as the chart tells me to stay in. Now, sometimes, you know, that doesn't work out so well because, you know, they start trickling out of them and then you get a headline. You know, this stuff happens, right? But a lot of times it, it works out really well for me there's times that other people get out and i'm still in i'm like the chart doesn't tell me to get out i didn't necessarily get in just because that flow came in i got in because of my own analysis right so the the difference for me is i i like to know the the why behind the trade when we start to get that that options flow we start to see the transactions that happen um on the dark pool then I try to go back and understand why they're doing that. 
can, can I pull up a chart? Can I can I figure out why they're doing it here? Does it make sense to me? Right? If it's kind of in the middle of a range and the flow's not like options wampy said, like if it's not crystal clear flow, it's good flow, but I can't really make sense of it on the chart. I can't really find a news item. Um, then I'm probably just gonna, you know, stay away from it. Uh, but I, I really like to try to understand, you know, what are they seeing here? Is there, can I put any, can I tie anything to this so that it makes sense to me? And, you know, now it's my trade. And for those of you, like Mel said, you know, for some of the most more advanced strat, and I wouldn't even call them advanced, but if, if you want to trade anything beyond just calls and puts directionally, a lot of these plays um, that are coming out, you know, you see the flow and, you know, if you know how to play spreads and things like that, um, you can really, you know, leverage the flow and, and, and get a lot more out of them. Uh, if you know how to, how to manage those plays and it's, you know, sometimes I'll start seeing calls come in and I'm like, eh, I'm not quite ready to buy calls, but you know, maybe I'll sell cash cover puts against it. Maybe I'll do a put credit spread. Okay. Now we see more calls, more calls. More. Okay. Now maybe I'm ready to buy some calls. The thing moves up. Okay. Now let's turn it into a vertical and sell some higher, you know, higher strikes against it. So I, I try to, I try to squeeze everything that I can out of it. I try to maximize it. Um, I'm also looking at, you know, I pay pretty close attention to just, and I'm, I'm telling you all this so that, you know, as a, as a trader, that's not just staring at flow. That is one tool in the tool bed, the most important tool that I have, but this is kind of how I use the flow uh, to find the trades that I take and find the setups. I, I'm also watching overall market conditions and internals, right? I'm watching the VIX. I'm watching the dollar, I'm watching gold, I'm watching futures, ES and NQ futures. And, you know, I want to, I want to try as much as I can to enter those flow plays. Again, if, if it makes sense on my chart, I can make sense of it. I see, we see the flow come in. Is, is this the right entry for me? Sometimes they'll, they'll juice them right away when they start coming into those calls. If you pull up a chart and you're looking at market internals, um, you know, sometimes you get a better entry. Many times these things pull back or come down a little bit before, you know, they continue to make that run. ADI is a prime example. Uh, we put out ADI and, you know, first thing it did was uh, we started seeing big money flow come in and then it pulled back a little bit. It was down, I don't remember, five or 8% or something. It wasn't big, uh, but then it just, I'm looking at the chart going, they're gonna push this thing to ATH. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. So if you, if you, if you do have experience charting, and you're you're able to come up with you know kind of your own trade plan, and then use the flow to support that, um, it, for me, that's that's kind of the the holy grail is is knowing that they see what you see, and then being able to to make money off that. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic summary of the way that you you know use the platform, and I love the cross combination of finding the flow, coming in with the technicals, and trying to understand you know why at this time did they do this. I understand both sides, you know yourself and Mike um, making those moves, but um, I, I certainly you know my personal style I think does align with yours, Bender. Perfect. Uh, Mel, I see you posted a couple more things. Did you want? I I, I could throw over a question to Bender, or if you want to talk to your uh, the ones that you posted first, then I can come back to him. Um, I want to let Charlie talk about this Dell because this is how you make just short of a million in what, two days, five days. Um, so he's going to go through this example. I posted a few because I want to kind of talk through how um, we take all the money flow together and going to kind of come up with a trade idea. Jenny B, you will want to stick around. I see in the audience, she's one of our moderators. I'm going to be talking about one of your faves. So stick around and we'll get a little trade idea going here. Charlie, you want to talk about that Dell? Oh, yeah, that, that Dell was perfect. I'm looking at your feed now of where they just came in and, you know, we could see the exit. Uh, Snap is another good one. Um, Swan had sent to me a minute ago, I sent to you. And also, by the way, while we're talking about Swan, he does a Monday, Wednesday, Friday live screen share. So you can actually 
see the platform live through a moderator's eyes and him teaching it. So, uh, go Swan. <laughs> Shameless plug for Swan. Yeah, that's that's very clear right there. Where they just bought that, you know, and you can see the exit. Oh, my daughter is leaving, so let me go on mute here. Sorry. I can figure out how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I'll, I hear you. There's I'll, always stuff going on. I'll talk through on. it. I'll talk through it. So on 917, they came in above the ask. They hit it with a block, which we know is pre negotiated, for $2.56 million, paying two fifty nine. But then you can see right after that, unfortunately, it's not showing the timestamp, but we knew that that was hit back to back and was the same buyer. They continued to sweep into that, um, paying two sixty. dollars So here you have about 2.7 just shy of 2.8 million dollars coming into that flow at that time they had an investor conference so it was kind of um we didn't really realize at the time uh but there was an investor conference but you can see where they exited that position on 923 so that was kind of a, a run-up into that event they had some positive news come out and that's how you make just shy of a million dollars when you know what's going on in the money flow well, that's... So is that a is that a sell because it's white? Is that I see them? I see the exit of you know the well, three point six. The white. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me go ahead. Go ahead. So, so it, it, if you exceed all OI today, that will be yellow, right? It's because it, that tells us all OI was exceeded. When they went to sell it days later, it didn't exceed OI because you know. OI is already at that number. So we could tell because it was bid side and, you know, the white was also just showed uh, less than OI, so it was closing. Uh, but it, it will, it, if it's yellow today, it'll be white tomorrow, if that makes sense, because the OI is in there. It's like a bank account. Could this, I, yeah, I guess that's something that could be confusing to some new investors who might look at this and not know that it's coming from the same party, right? And the size I suppose they'd have to understand. Yeah, the size told us. Look at the amount of contracts that they bought, then they exited. I see. I see that with the size. I, you know, to me, as somebody who was, you know, not understanding at first that that would be nice. If I just saw this come up on my screen, I might look at it and say, "Oh, it's even more bullish." You know, somebody came in and because I see call, and I see you know strike price and date and but this, value, right? That, this, this one's days later, so the the historical wouldn't have been on your screen. You're just looking at that day, so that day you would have just seen a white bid side, and by nature you'd have said, "Oh, they're either closing or writing." The other three wouldn't have been on Got your it. screen. Got it. So closing or writing, but definitely not buying. Right. Because it's bid side. One hundred percent. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's making more sense now. Okay, yeah, I think that's very helpful, especially for anyone in the crowd. That's we're on the Dell post right now that um, Mel posted up top, so I think that this is super useful um, and probably transfers, you know, over to a bunch of different cases with uh, level two data. Um, Mel, was there something you wanted to add to that one? I did. I kind of want to walk through something that I caught after hours. I was prepping for um, something that you and I were doing, Gav, so I had to cut out a little bit early, but I just kind of want to show you and talk about some of what is discussed on voice. I know I've got a lot of um, support from our BBS fam, so I told them I'd be talking about this one, but find it really interesting. So um, I'm going to go through a few things, but this is a lot of the information that we're sharing on voice on how to take everything and tie it together. So if you were in the room with me earlier today, um, we were catching some call flow come into XRT. That's our retail ETF. We saw the 102921 $96 call. So that wasn't necessarily in the money. It was right at the money. They hit that for $334,000. This is not an ETF that you typically see weekly activity in. So I went and looked up the um, top holdings in this fund. And it's interesting because you've got Macy's that somehow, I don't know when it happened, has moved up to number two. So before I come off of XRT, I just want to also update that we had 4.4 million dark pool shares come in after hours at 95.50. And why this is unusual is because on average, the XRT ETF, the retail ETF, only sees average daily volume 2.63 million shares. And we have 4.4 million in dark pool activity. So that's going to rev up the relative vol 
um, for those that doesn't know, don't know what that is, relative volume meaning how much are we trading compared to the average and for XRT that's pushing us up um, to 2.3 times average volume. So that's interesting. So because I looked up the holdings and the underlinings, I don't prefer to necessarily play um, the ETF. I'd rather play some of the individual names. I had me looking at Macy's. We have one of our other moderators in the audience, Jenny B. This is her fave. She always nails this one. Um, really helps those small accounts. But posting the puts writing that came into Macy's for this week to 1029.2650. So you'll see that screenshot we're showing an opening position that's bid side, um, that's yellow. It means that that transaction has exceeded open interest. You can't close something that's not there. So we're seeing that as writing. And as they continue to come in, we're seeing that that contract price is going in the opposite direction. So they're writing and that's bullish put activity and that's conceptually a little bit more of an advanced ideology and, and a little bit harder to understand but they're writing premium because they don't think that that trade's going to go down any longer um so they're writing this week's 2650 so i know personally tomorrow i looked at that macy's chart it looks good after that big pop um, after ER, it's held in that upper range, um, pulled back slightly, and it seems like we may be making another leg up. So Macy's is definitely one to keep in mind for this week, as well as some of your other retail names that have been making some nice moves. I have a love-hate relationship with Macy's. I actually hadn't looked at it in like a week and a half, and just real quick, because I have stock market news. Evan, are you on here? Yeah, I'm here. He might just... Have you seen this Macy's chart since we sold? I have not looked into it at all, but I, I can assume it's only going to be going one way. Yeah. So me and Evan do uh, we we do like trades together every single week. We have a sponsored segment on our Monday space uh, and our Friday space, and so we had that this morning. And a few weeks back, we took the Macy's call options um, uh, right at like September like twenty ninth. And then it just dropped right after that. And then around, I guess, like the six, I think they were short term. They were like two weeks. Uh, so like two weeks later, they expired around like, I guess, I don't know, the 11th or whatever of uh, October. Maybe it was like a few weeks back. And I didn't realize, but then, yeah, they just had that one day where they went up like, what was that, like 17% um, or something uh, coming out of that giant jump. Um, so yeah, that's interesting to see that, you know, cause we were following, we actually were following some of the money. Um, this had been something where we saw big money going into it. Um, and you know, we saw the setup looks pretty nice. And I think our problem was we just went too short term and it looks like we were on the right path. Uh, so it's really interesting to see that I hadn't even noticed until you brought it up. You know, I, and you're right. Um, Jenny took the whole team through a great trade that day when we had that, that big pop up. Um, that's been her little gem this whole way through, which is, is great for, you know, those smaller accounts. But keep in mind, Macy still has a higher, you know, short interest um, at about 15%. So that chart's making its way up there. But in general, um, retail names, we've been seeing some flow in. So just kind of an interesting correlation. And just to give everybody that's in the audience an example of some of the stuff that we're talking through on voice as it's coming in, we're taking activity that we're seeing in the dark pool, we're taking all of the information, and we have a little bit more seat time and experience to be able to tie it all together and correlate it. So just kind of adding a little bit more context, because oftentimes data is data until you put a mind behind it, until you could put something behind it to actually put it together. And I think that's truly what makes the Black Box Sox team um, unique in that we have uh, the seat time to be able to take this information, process it differently. We're going to see that data come across, but unless you truly understand how to take that and make it an actionable trade, you may be doing a little bit more damage than good. Definitely good points. Um, okay, so did we want to come back to uh, Bender or, or Mel, I'll kind of let you be right now. You know, um, yeah. real quick, we should talk about Bender's $100,000 account challenge that he's doing live for the world, too. Uh, and he's putting a lot of these flow trades in there. And he's been posting that on his Twitter overnight. So if we could get that in real quick, too, it'd be great. Yeah. Tell us, Bender. Yeah, I'm, uh, so I started an account 
um, and this isn't, you know, one of those challenges that's like, oh, let's turn $10,000 into a million or something like that, taking crazy trades. Uh, we, we've in black box, we've done a lot of account, like smaller account challenges, right? Let's, let's see if we can double five grand. Let's see if we can double, double 10 grand. Um, but we got members that, that have said, you know, I want to see how you play a, a bigger account and, and not taking YOLOs, not taking, you know, I, we don't hold through ER. We don't, you know, we try to, to just take big money flow, um, and just, just, you know, play it right and and use good risk management and that sort of thing so i started this account two weeks ago um the first i think the first trade in it i think was last week uh with 100 grand it's up like three and a half percent um and i'm actually gonna have to move the account because the idea was i was going to uh this is a fresh account so i can show every transaction every trade every current open position it's all being posted uh updates throughout the day if i take profit on something i trim a position whatever i i, I post it uh but i did also want to um you know like i was talking about earlier be able to you know play verticals and and that sort of thing um and and show how to really squeeze everything you can out of these trades uh unfortunately e-trade only lets you have one margin account per social security number so i'm actually having to set up a different account and move this but I am going to keep this exercise going, um, and and I plan to keep it going, you know, for at least the next twelve months. You know, th these are the trades that if 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 all you were doing was trying to follow the uh, the best setups, and I screwed up on one, I'll admit it. There's one loser in there that I'm not too happy about. Plug, <laughs> but uh, you know, these these are these are. Uh, the idea is these are the trades that if you're watching flow, these are what you want to look for. Got it. Awesome. Well, definitely, you know, I always enjoy these challenges personally. Uh, it's nice to see people, you know, putting it out there and on the line and for others to see and, you know, not just, you know, posting the winners after they've won, but rather letting uh, the world run up with it. All about transparency. I think that's kind of the, the ideology of these spaces and everything that we're doing. So I think it fits right in line with it. Cool. Okay. So, all right. I think everybody's had a little bit of a chance to speak. Um, we might dive deeper into a couple other topics, but, you know, Mel, I'll keep coming back to you. Is there anybody that you, you know, because you know your team best, did you want to kind of poke or prod into any other areas? Um, you know, just if, if David's on the line, if he can talk a little bit about, you know, the, the community and, and, and one of the things that is extremely difficult for retail is it's hard to stay in front of those screens all day. That's not something that you're necessarily able to do. Um, we do have an app that pushes flow plays through. So, so um, David or, or Charlie, if you wanted to kind of jump on this a little bit. So essentially um, you're able to still stay connected. We're kind of looking at that information. We're finding the best of the best and trying to push that out and still giving that retail trader that is working and going back to that nine to five, a chance to still stay active in the market, but by following that like really smart money, that, that, that size flow. And, and that's important because, you know, there's been a big shift going back into people working at the office instead of at home, but um, you still wanted to stay active with trading. We want to make sure you're doing that responsibly. Charlie, you want to take that or David? No, let's let David have that one. Yeah, so we do. We, I mean, one of our main primary goals, especially now coming out of the pandemic, is to provide all of these tools to accommodate people at home at a desktop setup at their trade station or on the go, working their nine to five or doing their day to day stuff. You know, whether they're getting a coffee at Starbucks or picking up their kids from school during power hour, we want to provide all of this information for them. Uh, so the the flow plays going through the app, uh, the team trader plays the options alerts and we try to provide this to where everybody can stay connected and know basically what's going on in the market and then listening in a lot of our members they listen in while they're working they've got an earbud in or they're listening with their speakers you know wherever the case may be uh this is just keep your pulse on the market stay in touch and the community working together which everybody does a really incredible job with the community that we have to be able to stay connected and to, you know, like I said earlier, sharing those ideas and, you know, the moderators are calling out what's going on and what they're getting into and why, and, you know, the, the moves that they're making, 
uh, within the market based on the information that they're seeing with the features on black box. Definitely. I think that community aspect really helps and gives you, you know, people to talk to and it's the full picture is what I've come to learn with these, these platforms. And, you know, another one that I use regularly is trend spider and it's more than just the tools that you get on them, but the education goes so far and, you know, having a community because honestly, you know, you could get an account and not know what to do. Right. And you can be so lost, but of course we have this space right now where, you know, I feel like I've been, you know, taking notes throughout this and I've been actually on the platform following along as we've talked about things. I've been playing around with the filter settings, with the charting. Um, you know, now I understand the white versus purple versus yellow and I can see different things coming in and out. And, you know, I'm going to dive deeper into that as well, but I think that's what you got to do when it comes to uh, different platforms like this. Um, okay. So I'm just trying to see, I don't see any other questions in my DMS right off the bat. Um, I think, you know, there's, the questions that I have right now are people that want like analysis on like um, specific, uh, specific, you know, stocks. Um, and just for people requesting them, I, I did have planned speakers for this one. So I don't plan on uh, bringing up people from the audience. Um, if you've been to some of my spaces, that's typically how I do um, do them is I, I just have planned speakers. Um, and, you know, those are set up ahead of time, usually about a week in advance. And I want to make sure that they have the opportunity Um but I'm happy to take questions in the DMs and ask them. So if anybody does have a question, if you're requesting, you know, feel free to shoot that over to me. Um, there was one earlier. Maybe we'll just touch on a few individual stocks since we have you all here. And then we'll go into wrap up in maybe like five to ten minutes. Um, so individual stocks. Mel, is that okay? Go for it. Let's see what, let's see what we have coming through. But just going to right. caution people. If we've got a lot of ERs. So we want to be really aware of that ER flow because none of us are going to advise, regardless of what activity we are seeing, that you hold anything through in the ER, especially options, especially short dated options. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. This was, an, I'll do this one first, actually, that just came in because this is applicable. They asked if the big money, do you think it's still in EXPE because the OI has dropped? And they'll kind of let you pick who to answer. I'm not, we haven't seen that the OI has dropped. Um, let me go back. Actually, today, uh, I'll have to go back and look. I'm, I don't think I that the OI drop. has dropped. Yeah, and actually today, they came in and they wrote shorter dated puts, which is bullish put activity. So not only have we had call it, no, no, actually, they came back into the 11, 19, 175s um, with some size contract price moving up and they're writing puts. So I'm not seeing where they've exited that position. Okay. Well, no worries. Also, really nice message here from Fuse. Uh, that's just their name, not their username. Uh, they said, uh, just messaging you to let you know that the team up there this evening has vibed so well together and they really appreciate this opportunity. So, uh, I'm sure that the team appreciates you coming in and listening to you. Um, and honestly, to the listeners, you really make it all worth it, right? Like this is a team taking an hour out of their evening, right? When they could be with family, it could be with dinner, it could be having a drink, whatever it is. Um, but they chose to be on here, right? And to educate and, you know, coordinate with me and set up a time. And you know, I value that deeply into the listeners. The same exact thing goes for you, right? You don't have to be here. You don't have to be listening. Um, you could be elsewhere, but you chose 300 people for most of this to come on, listen, you know, and now there's people that I know want to come to all of these because they're DMing me, they're on my calendar, right? Like I have a, I have a free public Google calendar if anyone is interested and I put all my spaces on there and every single day people message me and say, hey, can you add me to that calendar? Um, that way they can know when these things are coming up. So, you know, big shout out to the listeners as well. I think it goes both ways because um, you're the ones that make it worth it, right? If we were coming in here and there were four or five people, it might not be worth the speaker's time, but, you know, to have hundreds of people come and enjoy and appreciate this, um, is great. And of course, for me, you know, I get to help them with my questions. And I'm just here to learn, to be honest, I have, you know, I'm, I'm pretty early on in my trading career, certainly in comparison to many of these. And, you know, to see a team like this that operates like a family, thank you, Angie, for putting it that way, she just DM me, uh, truly is a family, um, makes it really, really exciting to be a part of it. Okay, a uh, couple of other uh, names. All right, here's an answer. Um, Okay, this is interesting. So uh, this is about, you know, yourself versus the unusual whales platform. So is there, what are the differences between dark flow, dark pool flows on unusual whales and black box or flow algo uh, or cheddar flow? 
I'm not sure exactly what cheddar flow is. Maybe you guys know. Um, I think they're just asking, you know, are people getting different information in regards to dark pool flows on different platforms? You'll get a different interpretation on some of them. We look at it as Mel, you know, as just did a dark pool thing with you before this. We look at them as levels. To call those buys and sells, actual buys and sells, is a disservice and that, to anybody that does that. Uh, and Mel's actually interviewing uh, a, a friend of ours that runs a hedge fund and actually buys in the dark pool. And he, he can testify that, look, some of those are very mislabeled because if that print comes in five seconds, you know, say it fills and it comes across the exchange in five seconds, they're using what happened five seconds later, not what happened when that actually filled before it was reported. Um, that's one of the differences. So as far as the dark pool, dark pool, dark pool, uh, for the most part, as far as flow, uh, we would never knock another service. That's just not our thing. There's a lot of differences. Uh, we aggregate our flow. So if it's $2.2 million, uh, $2.2 million sweep, we're going to show you it was a $2.2 million sweep. Now, anytime there's a sweep and it, cr it crosses multiple exchanges, uh, exchange XYZ might fill $300,000 of it. And then another exchange might fill 100000 of it, right? And another exchange might fill 50000 of it. Some sites will show you that as individual orders. It's not. It's one person. So then you might type in and say, well, how many orders for over 50,000? It'll look like, oh my God, there was 20 of them right there. That's so bullish. There's 20 people buying 50 grand a piece when in essence, it's just one person buying. So what I will say is flow should be aggregated uh, for any site that doesn't do that because to me, that gives a very false impression that there's more bullish people than there is, which could lead you to press a buy button quicker than you maybe need to. Uh, it's one order. It's one order, and it should be shown as one order. And I'll just no. <clears throat> yes, I'll just add to that. So I'll I'll just try to say that there's oftentimes a lot of misunderstanding. It's great that you have data, um, but you want to be very cautious. The last thing that we want to do is put anything out that would mislead anybody. Look, this is data people are making trade decisions off of. It should not be misleading. And <clears throat> additionally, I think that's where our biggest difference is. So regardless of what else there is, is that um, we know that this data can be overwhelming for somebody who's coming in new or hasn't looked at this before. And that's why we make it the biggest part of our edge and the biggest part of what we offer is that we have 12 moderators that are experienced. We're trading our own personal accounts while on through voice, talking through everything that we're seeing. And and just a side note, and I shared this, and I, I don't do this often, but I love this because people are still out there working. But, you know, I got this message that said, Mel, just wanted to say thanks, 100 buck Chuck, which that's a little terminology <laughs> in our community. That means just taking profit while we got our profit on both HD and DLTR from your voice mention of the flows last week while I was listening and moving dirt. You're talking about somebody out there that's working hard, a nine to five, and still able to side hustle. He's not even on and able to look at the screen, but he's entrusting in us enough to know that we're, we're calling out what we're seeing and we're calling out the best. We're not just saying, here's a shitload of data, excuse my French, here, find some plays. We're, we're directing you and going, this is unusual. You don't see this. This is not a name you see. We've seen this name before. This has responded well when we've seen floor. And that's something that each of us as moderators um, on the team, I know I personally take to heart. I know how many people are on voice that are at work with an air, you know, an AirPod in that can't look at the screens. I want to be their eyes and ears and I want to do it responsibly. That's something I hold personal to my heart. Um, so I don't want to just shove a whole bunch of data and you get a 30 minute lunch break and you go just try to find something. I want you to be listening in and grab the right thing and still be able to do what you have to do to be able to feed your family, but also try to get yourself to that next level by still being active and a part of the market. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and I'll, I'll give you a the brief there thing, Charlie, cause I'm going to move the drop up in a minute. I wanted to use some individual stocks, but I actually do have a deadline in about 10 minutes. Um, so 
uh, I will say for the people that are DMing me, if people have asked me to add to that to the calendar, I need you to send me your email address. So if you need it, if you want to be added to the calendar, all you got to do is send me the email address. Nobody else will see it. There's hundreds of people in the calendar. Um, and you'll just see when all my spaces are. And I will talk about what those spaces will be towards the end of this. Um, but yeah, Charlie, um, last comment on that. I saw you oh, uh, I, mic I, off yeah, beforehand. I, I'm trying to find it. It's hard for me to find the, the uh, mic. No, it's, 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 it really goes back to, you know, uh, those 12 moderators we have that, that are willing to answer questions about that flow every time flow comes through. That's very important. Um, you know what trades we're taking. Some of these other sites, and again, hey, every site's got their advantages and disadvantages probably. But what are they trading? What are the owners of those other sites trading? I have no clue. And, I, and I'm a member of every site just because, and I assume they're a member of Black Box too, because as competition, you know, for everybody that's comp I consider competition, I want to see what they're doing at all times. Uh, and I would assume they do the same thing. But one of the things that we see a lot of things miscalled because machines can't read flow. A machine just says, okay, it's bid side, it's a sell. It's ask side, it's a buy. That's not always true because if you're closing out contracts or you're writing contracts, there's a million things that come into play. While you could probably use that about 90, 92% of the time to consider everything a bull or a bear just because it's a bid or an ask, completely, completely the wrong way to read flow. A machine cannot read flow. Humans have to interpret that tape. So that's probably the biggest pet peeve with everybody out there. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Okay. Um, so going to go into um, some closing remarks. So stick around because you want to know this is kind of what's on their outlook and their horizon. And then, you know, based on the demand for, you know, some individual names that people want, uh, maybe I'll do another um, call. But if you really want to hear individual names, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. EST, Mel's going to be on that also. We do a full technical analysis and market sentiment space that runs from 8 p.m. EST to about 10 p.m. EST on Tuesday nights. Uh, we have several other technical traders on that as well, including um, Sarah Strat Sniper, uh, Gergavin, and, and others. So really, if you want to go into individual names, that's a great time for it. So I'm going to probably keep those from then because I see people want like Lucid and Tesla and AMD and they want to hear both sides of it, you know, the puts, the calls, and we're going to break down all of that. So listen, as long as you're following, you'll see those spices come up at the top of your timeline. And if you want to have an alert 10 minutes beforehand, just let me add you to the calendar. It'll make it real easy for you. Uh, with that being said, going to move into just, you know, um, some wrap up. So about a minute um, or so each, uh, just, you know, what else is on your horizon, your outlook? And is there anything else that you want the audience to know? Um, Charlie, do you want to go first? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get through this ER week and see what kind of sympathy plays we get and what kind of flow comes in after these big tech earnings and uh, especially after AMD because that could impact NVIDIA and several other things. So, oh, that's a nice book walking out of my woods into my yard. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, really, that's all I got. Awesome. It was a pleasure having you on. Um, you know, excited to see more of your content in my feed. Uh, cool. Um, Mel, would you like to go next? I uh, sure would. Yes, we will be doing Twitter spaces tomorrow. This has been an amazing opportunity for myself, um, as well as the community to kind of just share different insights. I'm able to bring in some of that money flow aspect. So any of our followers and listeners, please make sure that you follow Wolf. He is uh, the most gracious and energetic host. Uh, I've absolutely loved uh, being on all these spaces with him and was delighted when he wanted to bring our crew on to kind of have our own little special night. So thank you for that, Gav. But do want to make sure that everybody does follow uh, Wolf for any upcoming events that he has. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of these with you in the future. And I appreciate it as well. Uh, sorry, I had to go on mute for a second. I was uh, uh, trying to get some pictures of that book. But uh, yeah, thank you for having us on, man. It was, it was a pleasure for sure. 100% pleasure is all mine. Uh, okay, Mike. Yeah, so uh, again, just as you mentioned, thanks for having us here. Um, I can talk option flow and trading for hours on end, so I appreciate any uh, opportunity to do that. Um, as far as outlook, I'm a really simple trader, and I try to simplify it at uh, every chance I can. And that's what flow trading is for me. So as far as outlook, I don't have any kind of long-term or short-term plan necessarily. I don't have biases to the upside or downside. I literally just wait and see what the big money does. 
And even during a market downturn, we'll see when they pull back a little bit and then we'll see when they get aggressive going back into the market. So I really do keep this as simple as possible to the, to the point of I'm just literally watching where the big money is putting their money to use, where they're actually exposing their capital to the market. So I don't do a lot of long-term outlooks. It's literally just what is the big money doing? And that has simplified my trading quite a bit. Um, and I used to be about 10% flow trading, 90% technical analysis. These days it's actually flipped. I'm probably about 90% flow trading, 10% technical analysis when I don't see the right flow that I'm looking for. So I don't do a lot of that outlook and long-term type stuff. I'm literally as simple as possible, just following what the big money does and just waiting to see how they put their capital to use. Love it. Uh, well, hopefully I'll be tuning in to some of your uh, Thursday workshops so I can understand a little bit more about that because it's certainly something that's becoming more incorporated into my style. Uh, Bender. Yeah, so I guess in closing, obviously, thank you for having us. I really enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully everyone out there got something out of it. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to say this. I come from an IT background and, uh, you know, Options Mafia hit a little bit on the difference of platforms and, and what makes them different and, and things like that. Um, the data is just data. And, you know, I know the people behind Black Box and kind of what they're doing you know, behind the scenes, how they're bringing this data to in front of you, and how they're how they're trying to correlate certain things that happen, and 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 how they present it. And I'm I'm just excited for, you know, what's coming. Uh, and it's funny if if you follow us on Twitter, if you follow myself, Benner Profit Box, or or Option Mafia or Mel, you, you've seen some of these these back and forth, these conversations that happen. Uh, you know, trying to look at options flow in raw form is uh, nightmarish so you know having a platform that can you know simplify that and bring the things to the light that that actually matter that are actionable is you know that that's what changes the game you pair that with uh with with the team of mods that we have and i i personally do not think that that we can be beat uh, the folks that I work with, that I've worked with for years now, um, they're really good at what they do. And, uh, you know, the level of patience that that's there, the willingness to help, um, I'm, I'm proud of it every day. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got. Absolutely. Well, that's what we love to hear. You know, sounds like, like everyone said, like the family that it is. Um, so appreciate you coming on, Bender. Absolutely. Let's get 4,600. How about that on ES? Let's do that. That's, I'll leave with that. That'd be nice. <laughs> 4,600. Make it happen. Let's go. Uh, David. Yeah, hey, Gav. Hello, sir. Final words. Yeah, so I th I, first of all, I want to say thank you for having us on again with the team. Uh, I think everybody really enjoyed it. Um, you guys do a really amazing job with the Twitter spaces, the organization, the flow throughout the whole session. Uh, but yeah, can't say enough about this group of moderators and what they've done. And, you know, the proof is in the success over the years of Black Box with the members that we have. And we're looking forward to coming out with some new things with a new app, crypto platform, and some other stuff that we have in the works. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing, which is trying to provide the best information in real time and the assistance and education that you need to become successful. And we want to see how things are going with your acclimation to the platform. And hopefully you get a chance to take a couple of classes, Mike's options flow class, Mel's dark pool class, Gav. And I definitely like to, you know, check back in with you on another session and see how things are going, what you think uh, of the education program and, you know, how the features are making sense after you take a few of these classes. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Life gets certainly a little crazy on my end um, with everything going on, but I'm going to make the time because this is something that I really want to learn more about. So I appreciate y'all 
you know, giving me the opportunity and, you know, everyone in this crowd, the opportunity, once again, if you've listened to all this and you're like, Oh, cool. I want to check out black box stocks reminder that there is a discount code inside of Mel's profile. Um, and while you're there, you should probably just click the follow button. So uh, make sure that those two things happen in tandem. Um, with that being said, Evan, uh, I had it up here. So Evan's up here. He's not with black box stocks, but he is kind of like my, my co host we're, we're a little tight at the hip. Uh, we do pretty much all of our spaces together, I think now. So Evan, did you have anything you want to say? All I really want to say is if you're in spaces, you're obviously a fan of this type of content. You got to give Wolf Financial a follow. He's always live, always doing this stuff all the time. So check out the Wolf, give him a follow. And yeah, I appreciate you for letting me chill up here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always good having you on. So thank you to everyone who came real quick before you go, just so you know, the spaces for the week. Tomorrow, I'm going to have two spaces. I kind of want to balance it out because I was doing a ton of technical stuff and I felt like people should really understand fundamentals as well. So at 6 p.m. EST tomorrow, I'm doing a fundamental analysis space. I'm going to have on Unhedged, uh, Decade Investor, Dividend Hero, Luke Denay, and Jay Singh. And they will be breaking down how to conduct fundamental analysis um, from all perspectives. And then at 8 p.m. EST, I'm going to have a technical analysis space. You heard about that. Mel's going to be on that. Several other big players are going to be on that. That's going to be really fun. We usually get five, 600 people coming into that one. On Wednesday, I'm going to have a how to trade options at 12 p.m. EST. That's one that I'm looking forward to. I'm certainly coming with the questions. If you have questions, be there. DM me those questions. I'll make sure to ask them. 3 p.m. EST, doing one with the street. 7 p.m. EST on Wednesday, how to invest in cannabis. And 8.30 p.m., investing in SHIB. Uh, and then there's more for the week to come. But again, it's all in my pin tweet, by the way. I spent like four hours this weekend DMing people, making a graphic. So you can see it all in my pin tweet with all the different um, times, dates, and everything. And my goal, again, is just to bring the smartest people that I can find on Twitter into a room, pelt them for, with questions, and do it all for free with the audience. So uh, that is the ultimate ideology. So I hope that everybody got something out of that. With that being said, uh, I have to go and drive uh, my brother's night school. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm wishing everybody health, wealth, success.